Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube, and I'm here at the Matrix Technical Centre in Sydney, Australia. You guys have requested this shag, a modern sort of layered long haircut for quite a long time. You're pretty excited and adventurous too. Oh, yeah. Big change. Oh, you ready to start? I am. You gotta do thumbs up, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> I'm collaborating today with Sam. Hi everyone. Welcome Sam. I already sort of mentioned about the colour, so uh, haircut, sorry, so I'm gonna let you tell us what you're doing with Kiralee's colour today because I'm very oh, excited. We are we're super excited today. Hi everyone, thanks for having me Adam. I'm super excited to be finally collaborating here because we've talked about this for quite some time. Um, and we've done lots obviously together at Matrix, but really excited to be a part of your hair tubes. Thanks for having me. Um, Kira is being very lovely to us today and letting us go wild. As soon as I saw Kira with her beautiful skin, I thought, you know what, we're coming into winter here in Australia and I want to warm her up. So we're actually going to do a really big lightning and we're going to go with some beautiful coppers, some peachy colours, some variation through there. Uh, I know that Adam's keeping some length, but he's also going to have some real short texture in there as well. So I want to make that pop with some of the variation in the colour that we're going to be using. Super fun. I know, it's very exciting. So I'm love. going to disappear and when we come back, Kira's going to be... I'm going to be here for be, hours. Yeah, she's going to be all caked up, ready to go and Sam's going to basically get into the technical stuff of what she's actually doing and why. So we'll be back in a bit. We'll be back. This is Kira's colour. How we're going to start this is obviously looking at what we've got natural versus old colour and we've got quite a decent amount of regrowth. So we're going to leave her natural and process that later with some a different peroxide in our powder. So the ends we're going to go in stronger where we've got artificial colour, we're going to leave that to process a little while, then we're going to bring it right up onto her natural and let that process. And all we're looking to get to today is probably around a level 7, 8, so that we can work on that copper choice later. Mixed up our Lightmaster with Bond and 30 Vol. I'm going to go through and we're going to start by lightening those ends, let it process, and we're going to come back and do the roots. Left the ends on for about 15 minutes now. We're going to go back in and do all the roots so that we're actually full scalp lightener. We don't want that much lift from the roots because obviously we are going to keep it a little bit deeper. Probably leaving this on for about 15 minutes with our 20 volt and then we're ready to rinse. going to cook nicely here with that 20 volt on her scalp and then I'm going to see you back here when we're putting on our final colour work. The colour looks incredible so let's have a quick chat about what we're gonna do with the haircut. So the idea is um, to create a, a long layered shape, which is shaggy in nature, shorter around the face. We wanna make sure that we keep all the length here um, and we're gonna bring the fringe in and we're gonna tie this all in. One of the things I wanna be mindful of is not to cut all this color out, especially underneath when I layer the hair. Tim's done a couple of different colors in here. It's probably worth mentioning that if you are working with a colorist, it's really important that you involve yourself in the, in the consultation or conversation before, because if we're not on the same page, we don't discuss the color and the haircut. Um, as Sam has already made sure she pointed out, don't cut all the color out because otherwise the last couple of hours to put all this color in, I'm not aware of the placement, how it's gonna be. We both don't understand the final result. I end up cutting the color out. She gets upset. Clients like, where's my color gone? So a tip for you guys, if you're working with the colorist, make sure that you guys are really in sync with how the final look's gonna be. So I'm going to start with the front. The reason being is when I'm doing haircuts like this, I always start where the hair's gonna be the shortest. So it's gonna be the shortest in the fringe. So I'm gonna section up and then I'll have a chat to you about what I'm gonna do in the front. I'm gonna start with the fringe because for me, the most important part is getting the shape around the face right. Pop your head down, darling. So you see, I've done triangle. 
make sure we project this in a perfect rectangle. So we want a square at the ends because short hair directs long hair. And I always say, make sure, just turn your head this way a little bit. We just wanna make sure that we don't go too short too quick. I can already see that there's gonna be some movement in and around the hairline there. So we're gonna take it down to the right length slowly and always allow a, some extra length because when we texturize the hair, it makes it shorter as well. It's perfect. Next triangle, just head forward for me. So we're gonna go about a centimeter over the top. And these two triangles just provide us a guide to help create the shape in the front. Triangles are the best shape to control the distribution of hair. That's why I always use them. And then rectangles are the best shape to control the hair to create a good foundation shape. So this I want to give me a guide on cheekbone and hopefully that'll do that let's bring back around for me slide back around I should say you can see again we're always working with concave so you see it shorter in the middle and we leave it longer on the side and then the third one we're going to do right over the top this is our third triangle over the top now these are all disconnected but we're going to connect them horizontally and we're going to go about two centimeters above and we don't have to worry about not retaining length because we're over directing, we're always gonna retain length on the sides. I'm gonna loosen that up so you can see that this shape's starting to form around the face. And now all our markers or our guides are now in there and we can now work on connecting that all horizontally. So I want you guys to see when I pull this out, I want you to see these triangles. So you can see there's one here, one there, and then this is a disconnected part. The further we project the hair away from zero, the softer it falls. And that's important because we don't want to rely on texture purely for softness, we use projection. So by me projecting this above 90 degrees, we're gonna connect these triangles together. There's no guessing. It's like literally like joining the dots. That's easy, be able to see so that's all perfectly blended, it's all got synergy. It's good, it really opens up the face. You can see the cheek. We've got a little bit of layering here. Kept all the length. Now we've just got to repeat that on the other side. for me a little bit and do a vertical section about two centimeters wide and then we're going to split that in half I'm going to bring all that forward a bit perfect and we're going to connect these well now we want to really start retaining some length so we're going to really over direct this a lot because we can always take more off well, we don't want to have a situation where I've got to convince Kira Lee that shorter was better. So always over direct and don't cut any length off until you know 100% you don't need it. And again, this is just providing me a guideline in the back of the haircut. So this flows all the way into the back and we're projecting it straight over the middle where we projected the last sections. Again, this is increased layering and we're over directing it to retain length. It's amazing how used to your own environment you get. I'm very lucky that in the salon in Canberra I have mirrors front, back, left, right so I can look and I can see from all angles whereas I'm literally relying on a monitor that is projecting the image from the camera and as we worked out it's the opposite to where we are because it's back to front. Nothing there to cut. Again we're just going to from separation 
with texture. We want to make sure you cut inside the, the design line. You don't want to cut through it, otherwise it's going to be lumpy and you're going to get lots of holes in there. And then you can see when we bring that back, you can see that's where all the shape is in there. The remainder of the haircut, um, we're going to do dry, so I'm going to use some Unbreak My Blonde now. The name can be a little bit confusing, Unbreak My Blonde. A, we didn't break Kira's hair to begin with, and B, she's not blonde, but we did lighten her hair has been pre-lightened and this is an amazing blow dry balm, it's a great leave-in treatment. Um, go light on, keep it off the scalp, but I'm going to pop some of that in the ends, then I'm going to wrap dry it, we're going to do some texture and then we'll finish with some styling. Just wrap dried it, uh, in interest of time I just took the ends off, um, took about two centimetres off just so it matches the length in the front. Where we've done this shape, you can see here it's falling a little bit heavy, I don't like that. So we just go back through now that we can see the hair dry, identify any movement, texture, how much it bounces. Um, we're going to go through and soften some of that weight. As you guys know I'm all about wash and wear, but I think it's also pretty relevant for us to talk about. If you want to do something more than just like a blowout something a little bit more special. So I'm still thinking about what we're gonna do when I'm, when I'm done cutting it. I'll have a chat to Sam and um, yeah, we'll make it look amazing. Be confident once I remove this weight that's falling on the top here, just a little bit at a time. We don't wanna texturize it to the point that it collapses. We just wanna make sure that it, it sits a little bit flatter like that, look at that. So all of a sudden you can see the difference between this side and that side, see it's heavy there. So it doesn't take a lot. When we dry the hair, obviously everything moves and I just want to make sure that all these little hairs that are poking out underneath are gone. That's why I do a lot of my cutting dry because I just find that you miss so much when the hair's wet and then we end up blow drying it, styling it and texturizing it when it's been styled and you just think, well, for me anyway, and everyone does it different. I've always found that if I cut the hair wet, dry it, and texturize it. Well, I think to myself, okay, well, what happens if the person doesn't dry it the same way again? Is that gonna affect the way the hair sits? And I think logically speaking, it does. The most important thing to me when I'm cutting hair is to complement the face shape. So I'm actually using Kira Lee's head and her face to like mold the hair around. So then even if the hair is a little bit fluffy when we just wrap dry it and it's not smooth, it can be a little bit more difficult to personalize, but at least I know it's all molded to the face, molded to the forehead. And if I personalize and texturize it, the likelihood of it not sitting the same again um, is probably less than if we were to blow dry it, get it really smooth and then texturize it then. All right, let's style it a little, huh? All right, so our haircut's done. And Sam and I and Kira have been discussing, I mean, and this is this is to my point. This could be worn like that. We've just I literally just used a flat brush um, Just to like wash and wear it smooth it out And we could leave it like that, but Sam and I spoke about how to style it And she's actually going to show me a way that I'm not really accustomed to doing and it's uh, How did you describe it inside outside curls? Random different, random different di directional curl so um, yeah, let's see what she comes up with. Right. Styling's done. The color is absolutely magnificent. Um, I got Sam to style it. Sam, just explain why you did this. What you want to create with anything you're talking about, shags and the mullets and things like that, it's about creating the height up here and the focus on the texture of the haircut and leaving out the ends so that you've got it straighter and longer. And this is one of my faves, the High Ampla 5 um, Matrix Spray, the dry shampoo. I just <laughs> tipped her head upside down. We did a quick blast of that through all the roots. So that's going to give her longevity with her style as well. Tomorrow she'll get up, add a bit more if she needs to, but just work in a little bit more and give us that boost of volume at the root. Then we made it look full. You can actually make it look quite short mm -hmm. by pulling it across. The colours come out. Um, we might get you just to spin around if you can. The shape, the colour, um, yeah, I love how what we can see now is from those 
those foils that we put in. And there really was only about 10 foils through the whole head. And what that's done is just because we knew we were gonna wear it more wavy and natural in texture, it's given us those little pops so that when she's actually styling it herself and the wave comes out, you just notice them are pops of color instead of actual foils or highlights or lowlights. So. What do you think? I love it. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Uh, go follow Sam on Instagram. Uh, yeah, we'll put it across the bottom here. And, um, and yeah, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, it's the first time you've seen the video, please do. And if you think you're sharing this video with someone will help them grow and learn or inspire them to change their hair, um, that's a great thing too. Um, until next time, from Sydney, Australia, at the Matrix Technical Centre, it's see you later. <laughs>